Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council welcomes you to a special one-hour Christmas broadcast of the Daily Mass. Your celebrant, Basilian Father, James Carruthers. We begin this prayer this evening, this beautiful evening, where we give thanks for the birth of our Savior and the beginning of our own salvation. And we do this in saying and making the gesture we make every week in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be with you all. Let us pray.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people 
who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were also shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. In that, uh, then the angel of the Lord appeared and stood before them And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, 
and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The Gospel of the Lord. Wilfred Harrington, an English Dominican, has this to say about Christianity and Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus of Nazareth is the key to what Christianity is all about. In the human Jesus, we meet God. This is the astounding truth at the heart of Christianity. And this is the astounding truth we honor on this night, the beginning of the mystery of Jesus Christ and the beginning of our lives in Jesus Christ. But for a long time, I've been struggling, not much anymore, but for a long time I did, with that humanity of Jesus And I would be surprised if many of you weren't like myself, were very comfortable with Jesus in the tabernacle, were very comfortable with Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist, were very comfortable with the Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, but were not too comfortable when it comes to dealing with the humanity of Jesus and what that has brought to our life. Like Harrington said, it's in the human Jesus that we meet God. Because this Jesus, which we have just honored during the singing of the Gloria, was born in a time and a place and a spirituality which influenced his life and made his life real. He was born in the then known Palestine, and it was a Palestine in turmoil. It was an occupied country. Romans occupied it. It was part of the Roman Empire. They paid taxes to Rome. They were urged to honor Augustus as not only king but God. The country of Palestine at that time of Jesus was divided into three parts, Galilee, Samaria, and Judah. And those northern countries, Galilee and Samaria, were invaded many times, and they spoke many languages, Greek, Latin, Aramaic. It was a very rich country because it had access to water. That's why everybody wanted it. It had access to the sea. And this was the land in which he was born politically. Spiritually, it was another thing. And where did he get this? His spirituality came from his parents. With his father, he would go to the synagogue on Sabbath and listen to the word of God. The scrolls were opened and read. But what did he hear? What were the foundation stones that were passed on to him as a young Jewish boy? He was told through the scriptures, the Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, that first of all, creation was given to us by God. Creation was what gives us food. Creation is what sustains us. It's in creation, if you look around, you will find the mystery of God and you will be able to teach. And this young boy, Jesus, picked it up because when he did preach, what did he talk about? He talked about fish, talked about seeds. He talked about sowers out there seeding. He talked about women losing coins. He talked about a father who welcomed back his son. Creation was there to teach us about that wonder of God. 
And secondly, in those synagogues and at home, he would learn about the sacred word because the sacred word meant that God was involved in their history. So he knew all the stories. Moses and Joseph and Jacob, the judges, he knew them all. He heard about the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah especially. So that when he grows up, what are the first words coming out of his mouth in that same little synagogue? is a text of Isaiah that he had memorized and learned and knew about setting captives free, feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty. This is the spirituality that he got in synagogue. It was passed on for generation to generation to generation. But what about home? We honor Mary and Joseph on this night. What did he learn from his father? and the spirituality of that little family. Joseph, we know, was some sort of artisan. He's referred to as a carpenter in one of the Gospels. So this boy would learn that as a trade, to be able to bring food and clothing to the family. And happily for them, Herod, the wretched person, was building a new capital just down the road, about 10 kilometers in Sephora. And they would go as artisans, probably, the the summation is of that now, that he would go because they knew how to build and do carpentry, and they helped build a city. So he would learn Latin, he would learn Greek, he would be exposed to that. But from his father, he also would learn the discipline of standing in awe before the mystery of God. Because we know, as we've heard a few times in these past weeks, of the great mystery of the birth of his son. And he hesitated at first, but heard the word from the angel and believed and faithfully accepted that word and accepted Mary. But what about his mother? What did he pick up from Mary? These are the words of Luke from this same gospel which I just read. What does Luke say about Mary? She pondered, she wondered, she questioned. She kept all of these things in her heart. This was a reflective woman. She stood in awe like her husband for different reasons before this son. Who is he? What is he to become? And like her husband, she accepted this child and agreed with him to raise this child in the mystery of the Lord's will. That's what he learned from them. Fidelity to the synagogue, fidelity to the word of God, fidelity to husband and wife, and fidelity to their child. Let's jump 2,000 years. Here we are in this church. Most of us in this room, there are very few, I see some. Most of us in this room have spanned the 20th and 21st century. What kind of world were we born into? Second World War, Vietnam, Korea, political divisions, Fiscal risks, you know, what do we do about ourselves? How are we going to live? What about these new peoples in the world who are emerging? How do we live with them? How do we understand them? So that it's not just a matter of Protestant and Catholic having to deal with each other in Ontario. We're dealing with the whole world, and isn't that wonderful, but it presents challenges. How do we deal with it? How open are we? How hospitable? How loving? How caring? This is the world in which we were born. Spiritually, it's not unlike what Jesus meant. There were divisions at his time. Divisions among those who, for example, one of his own followers, Simon, was a zealot, the religious persons, but they wanted to overthrow the Romans. Well, there are divisions for us today. 
inappropriate words like progressive and conservative and liberal and all of that we apply to religion, unfortunately. But there are divisions among us about how we believe. How are we dealing with that? Every age has its issues and its time and its place. But what is important for us tonight, Jesus was born in a time and a place, in a geography, in a political history, in a spiritual climate, just like us. But how do we deal with it? How are we going to live with it? So let's take the example of Mary and the example of Joseph. First of all, Joseph, how many of us are willing in front of the great mystery of our own lives to stand back in awe at the mystery of Jesus in our lives, at the mystery of what we see, that we see so many tragedies, we see so many horror stories, but do we still believe that the Spirit of God is involved in our human world, that the Spirit of God will teach us how to live through this, get through it, be honest about it, and do something good about it, to stand in awe in front of the mystery and accept it, even though we don't understand it. And then, like Mary, to take that life to ponder, wonder, question, keep them in our hearts, to be reflective so that the next time we walk into this church or one like it, we thought about our week. What happened to me? Whom did I meet? What went on in our family? What went on with, my, with our colleagues? What went on at school? How does that affect me? And what am I bringing to this Eucharist? What am I bringing to this place? to be able to stand reflectively in awe of the mystery of Jesus in our life. Harrington is right. That's what it's all about. But in closing, I want to comment, make a comment from a woman I admire a lot, Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa of Avila. She was asked by one of her sisters, about this connectedness of our humanity. How do we deal with this? Isn't it better to be in the chapel? Isn't it better to be off praying on retreat and so on? And Teresa of Avila, wise woman, wrote back to this sister. She said, you want to understand your life? Then go knock on the door of the castle. Let the door open and meet the humanity of Jesus. Take your humanity, put it in dialogue with his, then you will understand who you are and who he is. But we all want to know how we're doing. And this is the epilogue. We shouldn't ask God, because we're in charge of the answer. <laughs> If you want to know how you're doing in this whole project, ask your neighbor, ask your spouse, ask your friends at school, ask your, ask your colleagues at work. They will tell you what your relationship to God is. Because what Jesus learned in his family was that if you believe that God gave us creation, that God gave us the scriptures, that God gave us life, then prove it by your actions. And that's why he went out and he healed and he taught and brought hope and encouragement to everyone he met. There's our job. There's our role. On this Christmas night, my prayer for you, as it is for myself, that when we walk out of this church, because we were here, we're going to go back to our lives and hopefully those lives will be better off because we said we believe in the mystery of Jesus. God bless and Merry Christmas.
it is recommended for us that on this night we say the Nicene Creed. And at the moment when we pray the Incarnation, we will all pause and kneel for a moment. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the celebration of the birth of our Savior, let us gather our prayers and petitions and humbly present them to our Heavenly Father. For all Christians, as we welcome Jesus anew into our hearts, we pray to the Lord. For peace on earth, we pray to the Lord. For all people everywhere who are alone or who are separated from family and friends at this time of year, we pray to the Lord. For all gathered here today, called to be open to the word of God and to bring the presence of Christ to each other, we pray to the Lord. For those in our community who are ill, for those who care for them and for those who have died, we pray to the Lord. For our personal intentions, expressed in the privacy of our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, through the prayers of your faithful and guide us always in your ways, we pray in the name of Jesus the Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, Lift up your hearts. Yes, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of the things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and pray, paying their homage to you, the eternal living and true God. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior from, for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Andrew and Paul, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, all the apostles, Cosmas and Damien, Saint Basil and all your saints. We ask this, that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them at once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, to the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through, through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, make them holy with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 